imagine this, imagine fantasy football, but for speed cubing. If you don't know what fantasy football is, I'm from the UK, okay, so I'm talking about soccer. But you pick, you draft a team of players, you have a certain amount of money you can spend on your players who have been assigned value somehow, you build a roster, and then you battle against your mates for the season to try and get the most points with the people you've played, right? It's cool, it's fun, it can be really exciting, it can be really interesting, you can learn a lot about a player's progress, like you look at a person's progress in a different way than you would normally, which is very cool and very fun. It's obviously not quite as simple as football because we have so many different nations globally competing, not everyone has the same opportunity to play, although arguably some players get benched during football seasons and everything like that, you know? So I wanted to go back and look at this because people have tried this before, okay? So I found this post on speedsolving.com, which is a pretty OG, like pre-Discord kind of forum. It still works, it still exists, people still use it. It's actually the first place I was online talking about cubes, it's where I found the New Zealand community. I found Oliver on there, Oliver Jenks who used to own this store. I bought the store from Oliver. There you go. That's a little little fun fact for you there. A little deep New Zealand cut. What I found here is some chat from 2010, which I'm guessing is before some of you were born, but you know, that's that. It's before I moved to New Zealand in 2012. So another deep cut. November the 7th, 2010 is the first mention I can find of it. This person here, Cyrus C. I would like to try and do something similar to fantasy football with cubing. Something along the lines of each participant drafts five active speed cubers into their team. Over the next three months or so, results are kept track of and the fastest team wins. Like, pretty simple, right? Then what happened is basically everyone just piled in and went, no, Ugh, it's not gonna work. Ugh, no, it's gonna be hard, right? Everyone just, like, hit on this idea just being, like, no dumb. And then they... They, they just basically buried the idea and I feel quite bad for Cyrus. He has ideas, Cyrus, I'm, don't, I shouldn't gender them, I don't know who they are. They have ideas about this that I actually resonate a lot with. What I do not wanna do, what I do not have time for is drafting every single week, like some people have suggested and we'll get to that. But I like the idea of drafting a team and playing it for a season. Hell, we could even frame it around seasons of this podcast, which are like nine or 10 weeks long because I run in the school term, right? So this is where it first started, okay? And then, Further down the track, let's skip ahead to 2017, everyone. And here we are, December, well, the post is 2016, December the 26th on Boxing Day. Someone was bored on Boxing Day in 2016. Fantasy Cubing 2017 is the post. Collode, Collode. This is a post from 2016, and I think it's about, let's just read it. I had the idea weeks ago that I wanted to revive Fantasy Cubing. First of all, we are friends now, okay? Whoever this is, Collode. Uh, so I did. I've been spending weeks since then playing around with point formulas, learning MySQL, waiting for long queries to finish, analyzing data, writing JavaScript. I don't have time for any of this. I don't have time for any of this noise. I'm just going to put that out there. I'm not doing that. I'll run a spreadsheet, but that's the most I would do for this, okay? I just do not have time for this kind of stuff. If anyone wants to do it at this level, sure, but I ain't got time for that. They've been discussing how Fantasy Cubing would work with their awesome beta testers, and now I'm happy to announce it to you all. This is so cool, and I love the effort that's gone into this. We've missed a meta from 2014. Interesting, but what I wanted to look at is the document, okay? There's a how to play document here. We're going to go through this and have a look and find some of the characters that were in that were involved in this before we do i'm going to catch up with the chat uh stu cube we just need sports betting but with with cubing so we can uh find a good reason to go broke i can't recommend betting if you're under 18 i absolutely don't recommend it okay cubing in a tree zone speak solving every day wow i didn't know i didn't really honestly i didn't know it was being used the world wasn't ready for this genius in 2020 for real would all rounders get more points than good at like one event well here's the thing i i i have a, some thoughts around that what we're gonna end up with right what we're going to end up with in this segment is I wrote a script for a video that I never made a few uh, months ago. We're going to have a look at that because I've got some ideas for a basic system in there. It's not perfect. It's not finished, but it's a basic system. John Baxter would be tempted to dig into it. We have a coder in the chat back in Scotland. That's a good idea. Stu Cube, an easier way to do it um, would be just doing it for a major championship or for one comp. Yeah, that would work. How would it work when some cubers go to more comps than others? Well, I think actually Stu Cube might have answered that question for you, Curious Nick. We're going to have a look at this document because there's a lot in here. This is very intense. How to 
to play Fantasy Cubing 2017. Look how deep they went, right? They built a full website linked to WCA accounts. I wonder who this person is. Can we find out who this person is? Well, actually, I think we can. I, I'm not going to go through this entire document because honestly, it's way too deep compared to where I want to go. It's too much. I think it's too much. And I think that's why potentially it failed. I think they succumbed, this person succumbed to the pressure from people moaning and groaning about it in forums. I just want a simple system that's easy to play that I can play, right? And I, I don't necessarily think this is the perfect system, but I think it's impressive and awesome. So, okay, well, here we go. Here's the person. In the credits down here is now Kaylin. Kaylin. Okay, so Kaylin is the person who's potentially this person. Kaylin is potentially the person who, who started all this. They certainly look to be a coder, right? Because this is their GitHub profile. And usually people on GitHub, they make cool software. They've been coding since 2010, dabbled in .NET Java. Okay, interesting. So a big coder is behind this. Very interesting. Many thanks to Lucas Garin for the fantasy cube subdomain on cubing.net. Okay, I don't know what cubing.net is, but that's an overpowered URL for sure. Cubing.net seems to be a database of, of, of interesting cube stuff. You know what I did notice in here? <laughs> Rut row Cubecast podcast. But I'll tell you what, it's not me. And the URL is uh, is now gone. So I did have a look around and there is an old um, Cubecast podcast, but it died like eight years ago. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. If we have a look in here, look at the beta testers. There's an interesting name in here. It's old mate Kit Clement. He was on the podcast last week. So that's interesting. Hey, Kit Clement is someone I can potentially talk to about this. He might have some intel as to how this went, because I have no idea. It's from 2017. Felix was one of the um, testers as well, and Robert Yao. Chris Olson, I know that name too. He was the filmmaker. He is the filmmaker. He was involved in the Speedcubers. Okay, so there's some, some big, high-powered testers in here. Very interesting. Now, I should say as well that Fantasy Cubing 2017 at fantasycubing.net, that is no longer there either. So I did try and have a look at the website. It's no longer there. Ethereal Project 3D, she's one of our local delegates. You're meeting Kaylin. Interesting. Are you in touch? Can you put us in touch? I would love to talk to um, to Kaylin about how this went, about what happened. So what I'm telling you so far, what we're looking at so far, generally speaking, is this has happened before. There is precedent for this. People built it. People took part in it. Like I said, it's probably a little bit potentially too in depth. Do you know what I'm talking about when I'm saying... Like, I want it to be accessible for people. Ethereal Project's gonna reach out, amazing. Um, send Kaylin this video when I when I do the uh, when I do the clip. It would be amazing to talk to, to Kaylin next term. Maybe we can, next season, maybe we can get this up and running. How cool would that be? That would be so exciting. What was I talking about? Yeah, the reason, I want it to be easy. I don't want it to be too difficult. I want it to be easy for everyone involved. I want it to be easy for the people playing. I want it to be easy for everyone taking part in it, the people administrating it, because it's all gonna be volunteers, you know? But wouldn't that be something cool that we could get going? Oh, Gosh, maybe that's something I could collaborate with Speedcube Shop on. Hey, Stewcube, it would get confusing unless it's kept to like one event at a time. That's a good segue into my little idea that I had. So I created a script for this video uh, that I never recorded. Um, let's just read that script now, okay? What if there was a fantasy sports league, but for Speedcubing? Huh? Let's take a look. Okay, let's, this is literally a script that I wrote to read verbatim and I'm just gonna, just gonna like read it to you now. Okay, let's imagine there's a comp coming up in your region and you and your mates are gonna make a little Little fantasy cubing teams to battle against each other behind the scenes. People have done it with major sports for years and it's a lot of fun. Let me explain what it might look like. So this is like, this is my imagination of what this might be, okay? First, you have to pick some players for your team. Let's just say five for now. Start with a three by three specialist. Who's going to get gold on the weekend? Maybe pick them. Then you want an all rounder, someone who sneaks on every podium regardless and racks up all those medals. And for the last three, you can decide with your mates which events to focus on. For example, I live in New Zealand and we're the best at clock. So it's about it. Uh, and for this comp that I'm looking, that I was going to look at for this example, which has passed now. But in this competition, there's also Mega Minx and 2x2. Two two. So what I think I'm suggesting here is essentially a formula, a format that can be applied by anyone to any competition, right? Does that make sense? Like, what well, I'm just going to catch up with the chat. Stu Cube suggesting looks like we won't be seeing Fantasy Clock. How dare you? We've already had Clock League. I've already suggested to Kit Clement and James that they should do FT league. I would love to see that. Get Dian Sheng to sponsor that. Duh, that's easy. Well, here everyone would pick Max Saw. What, for an all-rounder? Potentially. But then, there has to be costs. This is where, I, oh, this is what I haven't taken into account. You have to, you have to spend a budget on people. Like, Max Saw, for example, if he's a big all-rounder, he would have to be expensive. You'd have to spend a lot of points on him. Do you see what I mean? Or a lot of your budget on him for your team to draft him. There has to be a consequence 
consequence to drafting someone who's amazing, is what I'm saying. Let's move on anyway. You have to pick five separate people, no double ups, and you can be as creative with you li- as you like with how you and your friends draft players for your team. So what I'm proposing here is not a final system. I'm just suggesting for an idea that you can just go and do it how you like. Um, uh, okay, so here's me just being a goofball. Oh, oh, so hey, look, there's a comp coming up in New Zealand and here's my little team I made. Let's go. So here's my team I put together, my imaginary team for this competition that had already happened. For three by three, I've chosen Andrew Feng. For Clock, I've got Edwin. For Mega Minx, I've got Alex Vuzic, obviously. Um, for two by two, I've got Yuki Gao. And for an all-rounder for this competition, I chose Brandon Harris. Okay, this is just like an example. Stu Cube, what about just doing a draft? What do you mean by that? Do you mean like doing a random draw? Cubing in a tree, Stanley Chapel going to be expensive for real? Well, yeah, For so in this example, right? Andrew Fang for three by three. He's got to be, he's got to be expensive because he's, is he current NR holder? Now I always mess this up. No, he's not because he's U. Actually, he's USA, so I can't use Andrew. What am I doing? But do you know what I mean? Like, I, I think it would have to be for people who are competing at a competition. People are asking me questions. Would it be regional? I don't know is the answer. I don't know. I'm trying to work this out as I go along. And this is half of the fun of it. But like, this is my idea was you pick specialists, one, two, three, four specialists and one all rounder. Okay. You, I, and you'd have to agree which events you were focusing on before you can pick your specialist day. Now, now I'm going to go into imagining how we might score points. Okay. So what we we're not getting into times. Times, I don't think is a good way to do this competition, to do this system. I think a better way of doing it would be to do it based on podiums, right? So for our medals. So I'm just speculating here, but let's just say the event specialists get five points for a gold, four points for a silver, three points for a bronze. For example, for example, this is untested and just the musings of a moron caught on uh, in a document, okay? And let's say your all-rounder gets three points for every gold, two for every silver, and one for a bronze, and they'll add up. So pick right and your all-rounder could be super important to your team's overall score, right? Your all-rounder could score mega points if they're getting lots of podiums. Oh, and let's have bonus points. Um, Two points for a PR, five points for an NR, and 10 points for an OCR, and 20 points for a world record. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. That's probably too many points and it might kill the game. That's kind of like golden snitch sort of points, which negates the rest of the game, kind of. That's what I'm looking at. In the chat, Stu talking about the draft here. So you'd get the first pick of the round and the last pick of the round. Oh, so like draft, yeah, so like drafting cards in a drafting cards in a game you just take it in turns to pick your players and once they're gone they're gone that's a good idea that's a really good idea because then we avoid all that just pain around working out a pricing system for everyone if we just do an og draft like we're playing like we're drafting magic the gathering right you just take it in turns and once a player's gone they're gone maybe it's just like rock paper scissors to decide the order and then you start picking people i don't hate that idea I don't hate that idea at all, but we can't have just everyone having one, everyone having the same hammer in the team. Do you know what I mean? Like that's not going to work. Stu Cube, that's, that's how we do fantasy sports in the US. Okay, great, great. If there's a system already for it, let's just use that. Okay, so then I went into, and I looked at this one event and we did some stuff for it. So, so the event has happened. Let's see how my team scored at the event. Uh, and I was supposed to make a spreadsheet for it. I didn't, okay? Three by three, Andrew Fang got the gold. That's five points. Let's go. Clock, Edwin Shen. Oof, what happened? Um, Three points because Brandon popped off at that event. So I got I got five points for Andrew Fang, got three points for Clock. Mega, Alex, five points, an easy win. He was always going to get the gold. Two by two, Yuki, five points plus two points for the PR average. Nice. Uh, and I picked Brandon as my all-rounder. He got, oh yeah, Clock. Brandon and Clock got three. Three plus two plus two because he got the gold medal and that's an all-rounder score for a gold medal was three points plus he got PR single and PR average so I got a plus two plus two and he got two points for I think a PR single in Megaminx or for a silver I can't remember I can't remember anyway my total I got for this little exercise was uh, 29 points. Marvelous. And what I've said down here is um, this is just an example. The point system might be broken. I haven't tested it against other people yet, but these are the basics. Why not try it with your mates? Why not come up with your own rules and tell me in the comments why they're the best? 
This is not an original idea, it existed back in the day, but I had a look on the forums and mostly it's just a bunch of sports dads arguing about the rules and not actually doing anything. And I don't have time for that. Look at that. I had an attitude back when I wrote this and I've still got an attitude now. Obviously, there's so much more you could do with this around the point scoring, whether you pick a team for a season or just one comp, whether you have budgets you can spend on signing a team, all that noise. Try not to get too bogged down in all that stuff and just give it a try was my advice. If you set up a league team, then let me know and hey, maybe invite me in. I'd love to see how you run yours and I genuinely would. If anyone has got one or if anyone gets one up and running, I'm so down to play. I don't know if I have the time or the patience patience or the intelligence to actually build one of these systems, right? I certainly don't have the time. I know that. I can't do this. And that's why I love the effort that has gone into these systems already. And I really appreciate um, what everyone's done in the past. Um, so let's have a look at the chat right now. Ethereal project points for consistency would be a good idea. I th Stew Cube. Here comes Sports Dad Stew Cube. I think a problem with podiums is there are people like Luke Garrett who go to a ton of comps and will easily podium if not win every event. Event, that's something you've got to take into account in your draft. You know what I mean? It's just like, well, if you don't get Luke, then maybe you don't. Maybe Luke gets the flu the day before a comp. Maybe he fall. No, I shouldn't say that. Maybe he um maybe he doesn't perform. Maybe he just has an off day. I see what you're saying, Stu. I don't think it's a barrier necessarily to using the podium system. Oh, Ethereal Project is kind of vibing on that as well. That way it's not just the three people that podium every comp that gets you points. So some rando that averages 15 seconds can get you points for having the most consistent times. I mean, yeah, yeah, I hear what you're saying, Ethereal Project. I do hear what you're saying. I'm not as big of a of a maths fiend as that. Like, I just want a simple system that I can play and have fun with. Cube Journey, there should be rounds based on how much you average, but realistically, it probably won't work. Do you guys remember? I don't know if you remember. Look back in my channel for videos called Game of Cubes, when I, re I invented a system that allowed anyone to battle anyone in a Game of Cubes race. So it's like Game of Skate, like you get letters depending on how you do it. It was all based on the percentage improvement based on your WCA score. Go back and watch that video on my channel. I might bring that back in the future, you know, like I, I, it hasn't completely died. And now that I've actually got people watching my videos, I think now might be the time to bring back Game of Cubes. Derek, welcome along. What are we talking about is um is the idea of fantasy speed cubing, whether we can bring it back and just make it easy and actually usable. Cubing the tree, I might set one up for Worlds 25. Heck yeah, do it. Set one up for Aussie Nats is coming up. I don't know if we'll get one and done in time for Oz Nats, but we could, we could, we could, you know, I wonder if it's possible we could sort out a beta. Listen, if you want to get involved in this, join my Discord, okay? Join my Discord and we can talk about it in there. Maybe I'll set up a little channel in my Discord. Um, it's in links in the description. Also, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. I'm trying to get to three and a half thousand, okay? That would make me happy. But anyway... Join the Discord, I reckon. I think we should continue this conversation in my Discord, everyone. Curious, Nick, the person who gets to pick first would have a big advantage depending on the comp. Absolutely, and that's why that system works better for going comp by comp. Like, you would have to do a different team for each comp. Not me cubes, maybe if you weren't allowed to choose the top five in the category, it would be a lot closer. That would stop the Luke Garrett effect, and people below the top five that go to a comp are usually way closer in terms of average. Yeah, I guess. Perfect chicken. Maybe you could just do the ranks and the lowest total ranks wins. I don't understand, but thank you. Maybe someone else does. Curious Nick, Game of Cube system is a lot of fun. If you haven't checked it out, go back and, and, and have a look. Dino Cuber, I know it would probably be more complicated, but as an overall cubing season starts and ends every time national comps come around. True, there is there is like that we could do a season version, right? There could be a season version. Stu Cube, even just like a Euros one where there's three by three and there's a draft. Lowest score when adding together, all averages over the four rounds wins. Gosh dang. I think jump into my Discord, everyone. Jump into my Discord. If you're watching this live or if you're in the um if you're in the if you're watching the VOD, if you're watching this after the fact, jump into my discord i'm gonna set up a channel in my discord so that we can talk about fantasy cubing because i just want a system that's easy that anyone can use that we can just do our own little teams like we have a little team of eight people or whatever it doesn't matter how many it's not one system to rule them all. It's just a system that anyone can use with any of their mates for any comp. And it's a, it's just a closed system. And people can just make their own variations of it as well. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? I think that's the end of my cool story, everyone. 